Coming up on Citrus TV News Live at 6. After 30 years, which historic Syracuse University building may be getting a renovation? And President Obama vetting a potential Supreme Court justice. And the free cash and movement continues. We'll tell you which pop star just announced her support for the artist. All that and more Citrus TV News starts right now. From the Citrus TV studios, this is Citrus TV News Live at 6, your campus news leader. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Jacob Reynolds. And I'm Topher Lane. The final five GOP candidates are gearing up for a Republican debate tonight in Houston. What should you expect? That's our top story tonight. Establishment Republicans may be fighting the inevitable after a Nevada caucus win for presidential nominee Donald Trump. He has three states under his belt already and all eyes will be on his performance tonight. The last Republican debate before Super Tuesday kicks off tonight in Houston on CNN. The potentially feisty debate will be moderated by Anderson Cooper and could be the final opportunity for Marco Rubio or Ted Cruz to cut into Trump's poll numbers. Trump's win in Nevada, South Carolina and New Hampshire have established him as a clear frontrunner for the Republican nomination. The debate stage will look even smaller tonight as the Republican nominees have thinned since the last debate. Former Florida Governor Jeb Bush suspended his campaign after a poor South Carolina finish. His exit had led some to believe former donors and supporters would switch to Senator Marco Rubio, who's also from Florida. But Bush's exit did little to help Senator Rubio in Nevada as he finished 22 points behind Trump in second place. The debate tonight starts at 8.30. Chancellor Sivarud announced a special committee to review Hendricks Chapel's impact on the university. The committee looks to see which facilities and programs are in need of an update as well as the commission to find a new dean of the chapel. This is the first review of Hendricks Chapel in 30 years. And the iSchool will be hosting a panel tomorrow to discuss the, F the Apple versus FBI debate. The panel will include professors from the iSchool, the College of Law, as well as the College of Engineering and Computer Science. The, the conversation is meant to open up debate about public safety and digital privacy. The panel will take place tomorrow at 3 p.m. in Heinz Hall. And for all the Wegmans lovers out there, the grocery store just earned the title of the number one supermarket by the American Customer Satisfaction Index. The family-owned store beat out other popular stores like Trader Joe's, Whole Foods, Target, and Walmart. This is Wegmans' second year in, in a row gaining this title, and I'm sure there are many students on campus who will back up this victory. And it has been an unusual winter, even by the standards of an El Nino year. Temperatures have been up and down more than our basketball team this season. However, students are not that disappointed with the crazy weather. Citrus TV weather anchor Brendan Tierney has more. Yeah, um, when I told people I was going to Syracuse, they were like, oh, you know it like snows every day there. But it's been very nice. The snow is almost completely gone. So sunny. Students have reason to be happy as sidewalks are not covered with fluffy white snow and some grass is even visible around campus. To date, Syracuse has received over 30 inches below the average yearly snowfall. It looks very unlikely that we will reach our yearly average of 124 inches. I just came back from LA, so it's a, it's a huge shift. Um, the last one that I remember uh, lasted until about May. I think it snowed in May or something crazy like that. Uh, so I'm hoping it doesn't happen just like that. The biggest difference compared to last year may be in the temperatures. In 2015, we set seven daily temperature records, and temperatures remained consistently cold for January and February. Arctic cold is what's expected here in Syracuse, but people are happy it's not like that right now. Uh, not really. I'm normally, uh, I'm normally expecting it to be the tundra up here. It's very cold most of the time, but I'm pretty hyped about this weather today. It's really nice. And although temperatures have been all over the place, nothing is that different than normal. We are just simply not used to the major variations. The 74 degree difference we experienced here in Syracuse the past two Saturdays is certainly extreme, but neither high nor low was a record. Coming up on Citrus TV News Live 6, an update on the Zika virus. And a shocking report revealed at the BBC. And the horrors of the missing Malaysia Flight 370 still not over for families of victims. All that and more after the break, but before that, let's go see what Brendan has in store for us for weather. Brendan, what have you got? Thanks, Jacob. This crazy weather I mentioned earlier in that package 
might take a title out of Central New York this year as Syracuse, Rochester, and Buffalo are all falling behind in the race for snowiest city in America. Will we catch up and win the race? I'll let you know in my five-day forecast. How you doing? My name's Steve. My family's lived in this neighborhood for years. Recently, things got so tight, we had to go to our local food bank for help. I lost a lot of sleep worrying about what the neighbors might think. That is until I saw them there, too. How'd I do, Steve? A little stiff. You could have done a little what? better. What? Come on. You know, I have an Academy Award. Yeah, but not for playing me. Play a role in ending hunger. Visit feedingamerica.org slash hunger and find your local food bank. Wow, these are really good. You act surprised. Practice makes perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. I've got a job to do today. I've got a job to do today. Have a good first day at work, Mom. Your donations to Goodwill fund job training programs right in your community. Feels good to start fresh, right? Sure does. And like that, you're a job creator. Watch Citrus TV Noticias at 3 p.m. every Sunday on the Orange Television Network. We certainly had some crazy rain here last night, but it's nothing compared to what the South has been dealing with. An extreme weather system that saw 27 tornadoes within 24 hours rip through Virginia, Georgia, and Mississippi. At least four are dead in Virginia, including a two-year-old. Searches continue for more victims stuck in the debris. The Midwest also saw extreme weather prompting widespread flight cancellations from Chicago O'Hare Airport. And Senate Republicans could have to backtrack on their plan not to approve any support creed justices appointed by Obama. According to reports, the White House is vetting Nevada's Republican governor, Brian Sandoval, as a possible appointee. After Justice Antonin Scalia's death, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell had vowed not to approve any candidate until the next president takes office. And three pregnant women in Florida have tested positive for the Zika virus. The Secretary of Health says they're all believed to be travel-related and not sexually transmitted. This brings the total number of cases in Florida to 32, with 11 in Miami-Dade County alone. The type of mosquito that carries the virus is very common in the state. And President Obama passed a historic bill banning imports to the U.S. on products made by slaves. This includes imports of fish caught by slaves in Southeast Asia, gold mined by children in Africa, and garments sewn by women in Bangladesh. This bill closes a loophole in an 85-year-old law that allowed products made by child labor to still enter America. The North Korean government is urging its citizens to work harder to show commitment to the state during the 70-day campaign of loyalty. Thousands in Pyongyang gathered in Kim Il-sung Square to show their loyalty to the plan. The campaign comes ahead of a historic meeting by the ruling party in North Korea's government. It's the first time the Workers' Party has met in 36 years, and the first meeting under current leader Kim Jong-un. This comes on the heels of the UN's deliberation to put stricter regulations on North Korea as their nuclear program continues to pose a bigger and bigger threat. Today, the BBC revealed the results of an investigation into alleged sexual abuse by high-profile DJs at the broadcasting network. The report found that television presenter and DJ Jimmy Seville sexually abused 72 people and broadcaster Stuart Hall abused 21 people during their careers at the BBC. It also revealed that many staff members and management leaders were aware of the abuse at the time it happened. The report is 1,000 pages and it was the first commission back in 2012. A Malaysian 
a Malaysian woman is suing Malaysian Airlines over the death of her husband, who was on board Flight 370 that vanished in 2014. She's seeking close to $8 million in damages for, for negligence and breach of contract by the airline. Lawyers say more lawsuits could be headed Malaysian Air's way. More than 200 people disappeared when Flight 370 went missing in March of 2014. After months of heavy migration of refugees into Europe, officials met in Brussels today to discuss possible ways to block refugees. European leaders are worried better weather in the spring will bring an even larger influx of refugees to the EU. Some proposals for helping limit the mass migration include a possible extension of internal border checks and a specialized Coast Guard. Now let's send it over to Brendan and Jake to find out what we can expect after the break. And coming up next, I'll fill you in on the latest health, consumer, and entertainment news you may have missed. And we started out the day with rain and now it's snow flurries. What's in the forecast for the rest of the week? I'll have your answer after the break. So who's going to do what? I'll pack the dead batteries. Great. I'll only put what I don't need into a duffel bag. Perfect. That's totally unhelpful. No problem. Meanwhile, I will try to comfort everyone by speaking in a calm voice. And who is going to handle supplies? I can forget to do a list for us. Thanks, pal. We couldn't be any less prepared. I'm proud of you guys. Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Search Ready Kids at nyc.gov or call 311. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek. It's been a wet and cold last few days, but is the freezing rain here to stay, Brendan? It does not look like the freezing rain is going to be here to stay. It's going to be snow at least right now. That's what you're seeing outside, 34 degrees. The wind chill is a bit lower than that at 15 degrees. That's allowing the rain to change over to snow, and you should see that most of the evening. Luckily, not more than a coating to an inch is what's expected. Taking a look at the Doppler radar, you can see the storms are coming up from the southwest. So luckily it's not lake effect snow. That does mean it's a bit heavier and dense snow, which makes it tougher to shovel for the people out there trying to clear the sidewalks. And the worst news is today's rain that moved through earlier washed all the salt off the sidewalk. So that means we might get some ice and freezing overnight. Taking a look at future tracker, you're able to see that most of the snow should be out of here by tomorrow morning. That's nice. Good news if you're heading out to class tomorrow. Looking at the nation, you can see not much is happening across the Glory Plains. I have a front across uh, Denver. Luckily, that won't be here until end of the weekend, Sunday into Monday. So dry once the snow and rain is out of here this evening. So tonight, our low is going to be 16 degrees. The snow showers should be tapering off as we get to the morning, but it will be breezy. And watch, there's some freezing spots on the sidewalks and roads as we go along. Taking a look now at your Citrus TV five-day forecast. See tomorrow, high of 22 degrees, 16 is your low, with the chance for some morning snow that will be out of here by the afternoon. Saturday, pretty nice day, 39 degrees, and then Sunday, 53 degrees. Chance of rain Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, unfortunately. So, Brendan, on campus this weekend, going to the game, what's the weather going to look like? Well, luckily, it's not going to be that wet if you're heading to the uh, basketball game on Saturday. Sunday for the lacrosse game, it might be raining. All right, and if I want to head out skiing or something this weekend, is that a realistic possibility with the weather? It is a possibility. There might not be a ton of snow left on the slopes, but definitely you want to take a chill on down those hills. And then you talked about it earlier, Golden Snowball, sold Snow Globe. Uh, is Syracuse a likely candidate to win that this year? Right now we're about two inches behind Erie, Pennsylvania for the snowiest city in America. I'm not sure if we're going to catch up because the uh, Adirondacks aren't getting as much snow as the Poconos this year, but we still have a chance at it. All right, great. Thanks, Brendan. Thank you. 
And now we turn to our ICYMI segment where we fill you in on all the entertainment, consumer, and health news that you may have missed. Jacob, what do we need to know? Thank guys. Thanks, guys. A new AP poll shows some interesting insight into support for presidential candidate Bernie Sanders. His proposal for Medicare for All shows in the poll that it is close to 40 percent that are in favor of it, with 26 percent saying they don't care. But not so fast. When asked about what would need to happen for Sanders' plan to go into effect, support seemed to drop. Factors like needing to switch doctors, pay higher taxes, and waiting longer at emergency facilities made many change their minds. And not only is Apple refusing to help the FBI hack into an alleged terrorist phone, they're now working diligently to develop security measures that would make it even harder for the government to break into locked phones. The FBI has ordered the company to unlock the phone of the shooter police say killed 14 people in San Bernardino last year. Apple has refused to comply, saying it poses too much of a risk to law-abiding citizens and sets a dangerous precedent for the future. Apple's lawyers will submit a formal response to the court order by Friday. And Adele is the latest singer to support Kesha. She announced her support for the fellow music, musical artist at the Brit Awards last night. On Friday, a judge ruled that Kesha couldn't be let out of her contract with Sony, even though she is currently in a lawsuit with pr producer Dr. Luke, who she accuses of sexual and verbal abuse. The free Kesha movement is widely supported by other female artists, such as Lady Gaga, Taylor Swift, Ariana Grande, and Lord. And the Hollywood branch of the NAACP says they won't boycott the Oscars on Sunday. This year's Oscars have come under widespread criticism for the lack of diversity among nominees. For the second year in a row, only white actors have been nominated for the four main acting awards. The Hollywood branch says instead of boycotting, they will work with the Academy to help promote diversity in the future. In Washington State, the country's top apple producer is taking a new bite out of the apple growing industry. The new apples are being developed in labs, trademarked, and then tested for taste in focus groups. These niche apples are more expensive than other generic apple varieties and bring in big money for farmers. Looks like Mother Nature has some major competition. And in other alternative news, looks like Legos are getting a Gen Y makeover. The Lego City set now includes a hipster stay-at-home dad. The little Lego man even sports a plaid shirt and scruffy beard. And his wife, well, she's wearing professional clothing. Now I wonder if the set includes a microbrewery and coffee shop for the dad to hang out in and listen to jazz. And now let's turn it over to Gabrielle Rusk for your latest sports. Gabrielle? Coming up in sports, hear what Coach Desco has to say about men's lacrosse missing a key player for this weekend's matchup against Army West Point, plus perhaps my all-time favorite international sports viral video. Warning, this will melt your heart. Stay right here on Sisters TV. Jimmy can't sing and Tommy can't dance, so we're going to put some hands in their pants. Aww. Kids will spend 22 minutes watching us. The super duper party troopers sing about ants in their pants. Isn't that funny? Ants in their pants, they got ants in their pants. They got ants in their pants. They got ants in their pants. Brushing for two minutes now can save your child from severe tooth pain later. Two minutes, twice a day. They have the time. Light check. One, two, one, two. Everything looks good on our end. And lights. Come alive with the forest. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. I'm a teacher. Let me tell you what I make. I make learning a privilege, not a chore, and frustration a tool, not an obstacle. I make working hard seem easy and giving up impossible. I make an old subject feel like a fresh thought and unconventional methods common. I'm a teacher. I make more.
Welcome to sports. The Carrier Dome's claim to fame. Basketball attendance is no more. After a two-year reign, Kentucky now holds the crown. Basketball attendance has dropped to an average of about 21,000, the lowest in seven years. The best attendance record this season in the Carrier Dome was last week's home game against Pitt with 28,696 fans. In men's lacrosse, with attackman Nick Paroli out for at least four weeks, coach John Desco and the team must strategize for the upcoming matchup against Army West Point. Well, Paroli's still going to be on a week-to-week. -week. We're hoping to have Barbara, Barbara back for this weekend, although it's not guaranteed yet. So Paroli definitely out? I'd say weekend. Paroli's definitely out. You know, we expect to have him back. In, so I, I, I categorize it week-to-week -week right now. I definitely think guys are going to step in and um, hopefully I can pull my weight and, and start to uh, assert myself a little bit more. I think I need to let the game come to me a little bit more instead of um, trying to do too much. Um, I think uh, I definitely will um, do better in that aspect. They do some different things with their face-off. I think they're a very good face-off team. They have a couple guys that have pretty good stats. Uh, so I think that's going to be something to watch uh, this weekend to see the face-off battle, and, and we're hoping that Ben's going to have some success there. I mean, Dylan's um, doing an outstanding distributing the ball, and our midfielders are definitely going to have a lot more pressure on them this week since uh, how well they played last week. So I think that opens up a little bit for us on attack um, as far as dodging and stuff like that. So um, we look forward to doing that. Paroli only played in one game this season and had two goals and an assist. Now in women's basketball, will Q's go for nine? Looking to extend its program record with another win against Boston College tonight. Eight consecutive wins is the most in Syracuse program history. The Eagles are already coming off a loss to Louisville. Tip-off is at 7 p.m. And Syracuse softball is enjoying warmer weather in Florida. The Orange is playing in the second Citrus Classic. Not the Citrus TV Classic, Classic Mix-Up. Tomorrow, a game at 11 a.m. against Fordham and a 3.30 game versus Morgan State. Saturday, Cuse faces 22nd-ranked University of Central Florida and finishes the tournament with games against Charlotte and Bryant. Another team in Boston, Syracuse track and field competing in the ACC championships this weekend. The Orange are occupying top times in a number of events. On the men's side, there are competitors in eight events, including Justin Knight competing in the mile and 3,000 meter race. The women have top 10 competitors in seven different events. The distance medley is the first event beginning this evening. And Major League Baseball. Ball is shaking things up because of incidents like New York Mets Ruben Tejada leg injury last postseason. Slide rules will now be in place. Four factors for a legal slide are slide prior to reaching the base, slide so you are able to slide and reach base and stay there, and not changing path trajectory towards the base. Also, to improve game pace, mound visits by managers and Pitching coaches will be limited to 30 seconds. Those rules were negotiated between the MLB and Players Union and will take effect starting this season. Now, this story is why sports matters. Five-year-old Afghan boy Murtzaza Amandi wanted a Lionel Messi jersey so much that he had his older brother make one out of a blue striped plastic bag. After international Fans shared the video on social media. It went viral, eventually reaching Messi, who worked with UNICEF, to send his young fan a signed jersey and a soccer ball. The best part, Messi is planning to visit his mini-me in person. All right, so Gabriella, what are the big games this weekend in the Carrier Dome? Well, it's a busy, busy weekend in the Carrier Dome. We've got Saturday with Q's Hoops and against... Uh, NC State. NC right? State, yeah. thank you. And then we've got Pittsburgh, or we got Army and West Point coming on Sunday with lacrosse. All right, now obviously, normally I would ask about lacrosse with that uh, player missing the attackman, but how will SU do against NC State on Saturday? What are your thoughts? Well, it's last home game, so it's going to be a little nostalgic for some of the seniors, and uh, it's going to be a big one. We hear a lot of alumni are coming back for the game. We can't catch up to Kentucky, though. We'd have to have, like, 50,000 fans or something, but uh, it should be a good game, last home game in the Carry Dome. Right. So as we talk about the end of the season for SU basketball, do you think there's a future in NCAA play this season or postseason? What do you think? I don't know. Selection Sunday is coming up in March, but but I don't know, maybe with the win, we got Florida State at the end, so they've usually got a great home crowd. We got to beat them again like we did, so we'll have to see. We'll have to see what happens. All right, All right thanks. thank you. After the break, find out what you should be wearing to class tomorrow. And a look at this weekend's sports games. You should be watching Citrus TV News. We'll be right back. Tim. 
Every proper bear knows that the right fit means everything. Especially when it comes to car seats. Oh, really? I just did what any bear would do. So know for sure that your child is in the right car seat for their age and size. I like it. To learn more, visit safercar.gov slash the right seat. Oh, hello there. Oh, where's that bear? So, I just moved in with this family, and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born, and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this, for his sake. Thank you, dear. Oh, you're very supple. It's like I was at your age. Back then, I was a sex expert. Used to call me the buttered biscuit. I know about birth control, too. So you can ask me anything, baby. Bedsider.org has birth control information and a lot more. And it's... Have you had sex in this car yet? There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. How you doing? My name's Steve. My family's lived in this neighborhood for years. Recently, things got so tight, we had to go to our local food bank for help. I lost a lot of sleep worrying about what the neighbors might think. That is until I saw them there, too. How'd I do, Steve? A little stiff. You could have done a little what? better. What? Come on! You know, I have an Academy Award. Yeah, but not for playing me. Play a role in ending hunger. Visit feedingamerica.org slash hunger and find your local food bank. All right, Brandon, what are we wearing for class tomorrow? Tomorrow you want to bundle up if you have an early morning class. You can dress a little lighter in the afternoon, but it's going to be really cold in the morning. All right, well, the good thing is is I don't have class tomorrow, so I don't have to worry about that. Good yeah, for you. Weather for the game, it's going to be... Rainy, not great for weather for the I game. guess, yeah. Brennan, do we need to bring a rain jacket over to the carrier yeah, dome? there's about or? a 55% chance of rain Saturday, 30% on Sunday. But the good news is it's 70 and dry inside. The good thing about basketball season kind of coming to an end, like the one good thing is it's not, you know, when you get into the carrier dome, if you get in there early, it can be freezing in the winter. And no, then it also you know ends no. before it gets too hot. Actually, fun fact. So the Carrier Dome last weekend, or the last home game against Pitt, was 15 degrees colder than normal. So, you know, sitting baseline as a sports reporter, you're kind of cold, you know. I didn't bring my jacket. I didn't bring my park it. Brendan, you didn't tell me to bring my parka there. you imagine you reporting on the sideline Filming in a parka? With, yeah. Right. Yeah, so. right. It would be it'll be a It wouldn't weekend, look great. Yeah. It wouldn't look great to wear parka indoors. It wouldn't be the best look. <laughs> no. I would love to see Beheim just in like a giant orange parka on the bench. Imagine though. him trying to rip that off if he's screaming at a ref. Right. No, he right. did actually. He did comment a couple of uh, the last home game. He said, you know, it's a normal day in Syracuse. And this is when we got like eight inches of snow. He was saying, why are we complaining? Beheim loves the weather. He loves the cold weather. All, All right. right. Thank well, you. That's it for Citrus TV News Live at 6 tonight. But if you just can't get enough, make sure to follow us on Twitter and Citrus TV News. Check us out online at CitrusTV.com. I'm Topher Lane. And I'm Jager Reynolds. Have a great night, Syracuse.